Hey friends, Deanna here with Homestead and Chill. So it's a beautiful day. Aaron and I are about to get working outside here on putting in a new irrigation system to this corner that we just recently re-landscaped here. And I thought I'd bring you along and show you how to make a really simple, easy DIY and even automated drip irrigation system just going straight from a hose bib or faucet. And don't worry if irrigation, you know, seems a little intimidating, please don't be because you do not need any kind of plumbing skills for this very simple system. And it can also easily be um, adapted to a variety of situations so you know we're gonna run it along here um, kind of in a, a hedgerow or a fence line but it can be easily installed and adapted to you know raised garden bed areas uh, flower bed areas or even to like um, patio container gardens so I'll show you how to do some different variations of the system as well as we go um, got all my supplies over here really I'll go through them one by one um, we found most of them at our local hardware store but I'll add links to so you can find similar items online um, if you're not able to source them locally and then and um, keep in mind, I'm going to do a written blog post too for this. If you would rather have, you know, written out instructions, check that out on Homestead and Chill. Um, that'll follow along with the same process we'll show in the video today. And then the one other sort of disclaimer before we get started is a best practice that um, irrigation specialists recommend is to not run the half inch black irrigation tubing much more than 100 feet, or it can start to lose pressure at the end of the system. However, We've definitely not followed that in the past and we've run black irrigation tubing, I'd say probably 300 feet or so, kind of weaving around our whole old front yard at the old homestead um, and didn't really have too many issues. Um, so just letting you know though that if you are doing really, really extended runs, um, that's kind of the best practice to keep in mind. So what we have going on here is there's a, a hose bib right here and this run up around this corner here is about 100 feet and so that kind of works with that good um, you know, best practice. And then we can also run a separate line from that hose bib going this way down the fence line, which we're going to irrigate and landscape in the future. So we kind of are able to split the system into two. Um, if you are working with a hose bib that's, you know, say 40, 50 feet away from the area that you want to irrigate, that's totally fine too. You can just run your black irrigation tubing from the faucet, you know, along a fence line, along the house, along a pathway, whatever works to kind of keep it out of your way. Um, leave it, you know, non-perforated until you get to the point where you want to start irrigating and then that's when you would install your drip emitters along that tubing and don't worry we will show you that process too um, so come on and we'll come take a closer look at the supplies that we have and how to actually hook this up right to your hose bib Okay, so here are all the supplies that we're using today, but keep in mind, not all of these are required, so some are just optional, and I'll go through them all right now, one by one quickly, and then you'll also see them in action um, when we actually do the install. I'll demonstrate how we're gonna use all of these. But the first two and most important pieces for this simple system is this irrigation tubing, your, your just standard half-inch irrigation tubing, and then an adapter. Um, and we like these three-in-one adapters. There's a few different brands, um, but the three-in-one adapter has a pressure reducer which is really important because the pressure that comes out of a regular faucet is far too great for a drip system it can blow out the emitters and it's just um, needs to be reduced so this reduces it down to what does it say here I think it goes this one goes down to 20 psi some of them go down to 25 um, but brings it down to 20 psi here there's also a filter inside so that's gonna help catch any debris from clogging up your irrigation system and then there is this little adapter part where the black irrigation tubing actually plugs into and that's how you convert from a threaded hose bib to this kind of drip um, tubing. So important piece to have. Then you have all kinds of other options as far as like what kind of emitters you want to use. So there's classic drip emitters. There are little micro um, um, like bubblers or little sprinklers. If you don't want to hook your bubblers straight to your irrigation line, you can extend it with this um, quarter inch tubing and connect that into that. Um, to actually make any connections here, we use this little punch and that punches the holes into the tubing um, to make the connections. There are these little Y end caps um, that are, we're gonna be used to clamp and sort of end the system, um, basically like a cap and irrigation or, or landscape staples. That's to pin this all down in place um, and keep it in place in the ground. Um, maybe not needed, but handy if you end up having any drips or leaks um, at any of your threaded junctions is um, plumber's tape. So you would just wrap up an area that um, has any kind of drip and then plug it all back together and this should take care of any drips. And then the couple of other optional guys we have up here, I'll explain more in a moment once I actually show you the setup and the different configurations that you can use. But this is a Y valve or like a hose splitter um, so that you can hook it up and have say your irrigation system, your drip 
system on one and then still have a free hose bib to hook up a regular hose to or fill watering cans from. So this can be really handy if you only have one free tap in the area that you want to hook this up to. And then to take it all a step further, we picked up this um, hose timer so that this will actually be an automated drip system. So we can plug this guy into the hose and our drip system coming out of here. This one actually has two outlets. So that's where we're gonna run two different drip lines from this same system um, and they'll alternate on when they run. So they won't be running at the same time. They do make these guys with just a single outlet though too if you just wanna do one to it. Um, so this is gonna be a really handy tool for us because this is gonna be virtually hands-free once we get it set up. And that is what you need, maybe some scissors to cut your tubing and your packaging. Now I'm gonna quickly walk you through a few different variations of how you can set up the system. So here's the tap that we're gonna use, and the most simple, straightforward way to do this is just to go ahead and connect your three-in-one adapter, and then that's on and then just shove this guy in there. I'm not going to do that quite yet because I'm not ready to set up the system completely, but this would just then have your pressure reducer, filter, connection, go out to your drip line and voila, you would just turn it on and off whenever you actually want to use this system. So super simple, told you, nothing to fear. And then another variation is to go ahead and if you wanted to add your Y. So again, say that if you want to have access for a hose bib, I'm not gonna fully tighten that because you know, it's just a demo, but if I wanted to have the access here for a hose bib, same thing, then just go ahead and hook this one um, and put your adapter onto here and then have your black irrigation tubing coming out from this side. Um, and then you can then use these little valves to turn this side you know on and off as needed and turn this side on and off as needed and then you can kind of again have two different taps out of one you could take it a step further and we could just really start puzzling on puzzle pieces here and you could put your um your timer system after one of these and then again still have access over here and then connect your drip over to this guy or what we're going to do is we don't really need this Y today um, because we have another tap right nearby that we can use for our hose. So we're going to save this for a different project. And for us today, we are just going straight from the spigot to our timer and get that nice and tight. And then we're just gonna hook up one side of the drip today. Later, we're gonna do another irrigation project, like I said, over on the other side. Um, so we'll get that on later. But um, yeah, so that is how we're going to set up our drip. And then we'll show you that next, is actually getting the black line run out and all the emitters connected. Okay, so before we actually get the black tubing all laid out um, where it's going to go, I'm gonna go ahead and connect it. So this one is one that you just shove in and it connects. And then there's little barbs inside there that prevent it from pulling back out. There are a few other styles that are like, um, more of like a threaded clamp style, but that one, you shove it in, once it's in, it's in. All right, all right, so we got it all laid out. For now, we are just keeping it up on top of the bark mulch um, and just loosely pinned it in each spot because now you know we're gonna come in and add all the emitters and kind of get it situated. Once we have the emitters in, we're gonna gently dig that back into the bark um, so that it will be nice and hidden. But coming down to the end, it looks like we had a little less than 100 feet long of this area because we have all this left and this was a 100 foot long section of of the emitter hose um, or the uh, irrigation tubing. So what we're gonna do now is I would normally recommend if you use this entire length to go ahead and turn it on right now and flush out the end. Cause as you saw, we were kind of flapping around this in the dirt and there could be some dirt down in here. Um, but because we're cutting off a good distance, I don't think dirt made its way all the way back in here. So I'm just gonna cut it and cap it here. Um, but again, if you use the whole thing and you think that there might be some dirt in there, go ahead and run it and flush it out first before you cap it. Okay, so to end this guy here, I'll probably give myself a little bit of slack so I can come all the way to the end, um, but we just cut it like so, and then you take one of these little figure eight clamps and you put it through, fold it back over itself, crimp it back through, 
and then pull that tight like that and that is now capped and can't leak and that's the end of your line. So now we're going to be installing these little drip emitters. These are two gallon per hour emitters. I mean, I'll show you the process of putting them in, but what we decided to do is there are a variety of fruit trees, edible shrubs, and just some pollinator friendly perennial flower shrubs in this border. So for our trees, we have some pomegranate, a dwarf weeping mulberry, another pomegranate, a couple Meyer lemons. We're going to put two of these emitters um, kind of on each side of those plants, give them a little extra boost of water. But then I'll for these little guys, we have some globe amaranth, um, some sweet bay laurel, some salvias, um, pineapple guava, scabiosa, all of those guys are just going to get one single emitter at their base. Okay, let's go ahead and attach a little drip emitter for our scabiosa pincushion here. So I'm just gonna use this little punch tool. There's a few different varieties or you know variations of this, but this is just a little hand punch and I'm gonna support the tube and just kind of wiggle and push and it will punch through. All right, I got it through. So see the little hole? And then I can take this barbed end of the drip emitter and just push that into the hole, give it a little bit of a twist, and there it is. So there is the two gallon per hour drip emitter that is going to irrigate this guy and we'll kind of push the bark out of the way so it can get right down into the soil. All right, then we just repeated the same process using the little punch tool but for this guy for our mulberry tree we wanted to give it a little bit more irrigation so we ended up putting in two one on each side of kind of the root zone and that will nicely saturate it one other option that I want to show is we already put a hole in the tube here and rather than putting a regular drip emitter right in there you can use these little adapter barbs that push into this quarter inch tubing. And then you can stick this quarter inch tubing into your half inch tubing. And then on the opposite end, you can either add a regular drip emitter, which is what I'm gonna do, or that is how you would implement these kind of like micro sprinklers or bubblers into your system. And that would just attach like so onto there. But I'm going to use our regular drip emitter, push this on here, and then now I can get water to this beautiful bougainvillea bush that is not directly next to our main irrigation line. And the other way to use this is this is how you would adapt this type of system to a container garden. So then we could run this up and into pots as well. All right, moment of truth, everything's all hooked up. So with these guys, with these timers, you just go ahead and leave your tap on. So I'm gonna keep the tap on, but the system is off, so no water is flowing through. It has a valve in here that keeps it turned off, but I got it on. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it on manual. Oh, oh put it on my manual for station two, um, which is our second outlet here, and let it run, and it should kick on. There it goes. And now let's go see some drip action. Dun, 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 dun. Drip in there. And it just reduced a tiny bit because it was just charging the line for the first time. And now it kind of regulated itself after that initial burst. Water there. Ta-da, it works. So let's go check the far, far end just to confirm, but I can already see it bubbling from here. You see him dripping away. So now we'll just go back and kind of resituate our drip to get it kind of buried under the mulch. And that's just my preference for aesthetics. Um, but yeah, I think that was a successful little irrigation project. Okay, friends, it's getting warm out here. So we're going to get finished up and get inside and get some water and some shade. But thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you learned something new and that you feel empowered to tackle, you know, a DIY irrigation system like this on your own. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to follow along and subscribe and definitely check out our blog, homesteadandchill.com. It's where we share even more information all the time. And happy gardening!